Greetings YouTube. Today I'm going to review the Combat Ready Battle Cleaver from CUDA. And they've got become so so modern. There's a little QR code on here. So here we are. Um, CBRCBCO3. Um, obviously this thing is made in China. It's it's a uh, a big blade. It's whoops, it's big blade and it's uh, um reasonably priced. I think I paid something in the $43 to $45 range for this. Combat Ready Knives are designed to be used in, in the, by military, law enforcement, and security professionals. The blade on this knife is extremely sharp, and mishandling or incorrect use may result in serious injury or death. It's the responsibility of the buyer to investigate and comply with the laws and regulations of their particular locale. Watch your six. Isn't that wonderfully paramilitary? So here we have the blade in its entirety. Now it's a big, big knife. So I'm going to take it out of the sheath. I'm going to talk about the sheath first. First thing, Velcro closure. I am not a fan of Velcro closures for a number of reasons. One, Velcro picks up dirt and debris, and it's going to eventually clog up. A snap doesn't do that. Um, so I prefer a snap closure. That's just me. I may add one in there, in fact, just because I think it's a, a superior. And it's not held in by a great deal. It's sewn in, but yeah, I think I can get that out without too much difficulty. It's a seam ripper and uh, use a couple of pop rivets or something, two-part rivets to put a new strap in there with, with some button closure on there. I can do that without a problem. So we have big loop here for any kind of a, a, a belt you want to put through there. We have an, two eyelets here, so you can do a leg carry. Then we have these two straps. And I have to be brutally honest with you, I'm only going to undo one of them because they are identical um, in, any, in every way. These things are long, long strap. And I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do with them. This thing is so big, I can't imagine you're going to want to put this on a side carry, but I guess you could use it in the area on a on a uh, load unit uh, uh, carrying device for, um, actually I do need to do both of them, um, for your, where your bedroll goes, your sleeping bag, possibly, I'm not sure, but I've never seen a sheath like this, so I'm not 100% sure what they're supposed to be doing. If someone out there can tell me, I'd be thrilled. Here we have secondary pouch which is quite large enough to put um, a small survival kit in there um, or uh, or a large uh, or a small cleaning kit or a large multi-tool along with ferrite rod stuff like that so you can get quite a few pieces of equipment in there if you want to and of course if you don't you can just close it up and because it's so long it expands so you can get a fairly large object in there um, and again, if you don't want to, you just flatten it out and put it all the way down. It's not lined with anything rigid, which I think is possibly questionable. I really think this should be lined with something because this is a big blade and it is coming out of the box with a relatively sharp edge. So folks, here we go. This thing is a monster. This thing weighs over a pound. Look at the stock on that, man. That is a thick stock. It has, I got the green model. I think it was also available in tan, but I'm not part, part, a positive. I believe that's a, a micarta handle. I'm not sure what those divots are for. I guess possibly bearing services for a bow saw, but this is really heavy, and to hold that while you're using a bow saw could be problematic. It comes with a uh, big square design here, which I can think I think gives it a nice look, and it was an interesting design feature. Um, and it's got two different places you could put lanyard. I, obviously, I would put it there just because it's a little more room. And I actually think with this thing, it's being so big, having a lanyard come off there and coming up this way would be a bonus for control. Um, there is a small choil here, so it's you know just for looks, for really, and for sharpening. I mean, it's not you're not going to want to choke up on this thing. It's too big. Um, here we have. Cuda and their little logo right there. The little figure. I'm not really sure what the little figure is supposed to be doing. But on the other side, we have the combat ready um, logo, little eagle with the uh, stripes. 
Like I said, it weighs over a pound. It's a little bit big for my hand. It really is. If I were gonna wanna carry this full time, I'm not going to. I bought it because I thought it was cool. And I use my YouTube, uh, my Google ad money to, to, to purchase it. I might take these two slabs off and get the machine down by half millimeter, maybe. Yeah, half a millimeter on each side, just to narrow that up a little bit. It would be a little more comfortable in my hands. Um, this is a little bit thick, but that requires a lot more reshaping. I could do it if I really felt like it, but I think just making it a little thinner uh, would be would be a superior. Now, so the important part of this is the blade. It's got a um, hollow ground blade on this section here, and in this section it is flat ground. This section up here is sharp, but not as sharp as this. I found it interesting. There actually are two different degrees of sharpness on this knife. This is significantly sh uh, sharper than here. And the one thing I really like about this, that both of these are convex gr um, grinds. Um, because that is a superior grind when it comes to cutting power and chopping power. It is the best possible grind you can have on a hard use blade. Or frankly, on an, any kind of a blade in my opinion. Other than like razors which need to be you know truly hollow ground with a zero point edge you really want a convex blade on anything overall seeing this is a big slab of steel and this is just like stamped out of it it's got pretty good fit and finish it really does this isn't going to be pretty here you're going to be able to use this thing as a hammer um, without any difficulty and it goes without saying that you're going to be able to baton with this batoning will not be an issue with this knife now, as far as it's being called a combat cleaver, I would agree with that assessment. You could do some serious harm. One of the reasons I think that the, that makes this the most dangerous uh, tool I've seen as far as combat goes in, in, in the kind of a uh, machete variety, because this is a big blade, and it does definitely, in my opinion, fall into the machete category, is because of this corner. This corner right there is going to mean you are going to be concentrating so much energy on that point. It's going to be much different than the curve of a machete, which that it, which is it, the energy is being dissipated over the entire curve. But this, you're talking penetration. I would not be stunned if you could go through helmets with this. I really would not be surprised by that in the least. You hit someone in the in a body armor, even in a ceramic plate with this thing, they are going to know they've been hit. Um, this is not gonna this is not gonna bounce off the way a lot of curved edges are. And it's it's just it's a big, heavy, very aggressive device. There is no fooling around, folks. This is a heavy use tool and a combat weapon. Um, I happen to really like this design. I saw it and I'm like, oh, I gotta own that. Particularly with this curve. I really like that curve because when you're holding it, and you know, you know like a, a machete goes straight, so that it's coming out like this. So you have to really kind of bend your wrist further if you wanna have that, that the top of the curve of a machete hit your target. Whereas this is already kind of in that curve. So it's already, already designed to come in at an impact angle that really is going to drive this into things. Um, and you probably have no difficulty whacking open coconuts with this thing either. That'd be quite impressive. Um, so overall, it's a solid design. It's a solid device. Very useful if you are a big person with large hands. I would definitely recommend this thing. Um, and I own it just because I'm a, I, I like to collect things, collect knives, and this is a big, hefty, cool blade. I like the design. It makes me think of some of the combat choppers that I've seen um, out there. I, it's a no-nonsense, and I, I'm a big believer in the straight edge because you have all this real estate, and you're going to get full engagement. If you hit here and you're doing a cut, you're going to get the same amount of cutting all the way up because it's not curving out of the way, and I like that. Um, so I would definitely recommend this to anyone that is that is willing to carry something that's heavy, that is looking for something that's going to be hard use and has a distinct combat role, can be used as a pry bar, 
I mean, this is just, uh, to me, this is a good utility blade. Now, the Camp 10 from Kershaw is still my favorite design when it comes to a large utility overall knife. But if you're into the into collecting combat weapons, or if you ever find yourself in a position where you need a combat weapon, I think that this is definitely your tool to purchase.